In this video we're going to take a look at measures of location and central tendency. So to begin with here let's just recall some basic knowledge from GCSE maths. So to start with here we've got the mode or the modal class depending on the data that we're looking at. So we've got the mode or modal class. We've also got the medium. We've also got the median and then finally we've also got the mean. Okay. So the mode or modal class, that is the value or class that occurs most often, okay? For the median, this is the middle value when the data is ordered. And for the mean, this is the sum of the data divided by the total sample size. So if we denote a formula here for the mean, mathematically, the way we denote the mean is x bar here. So the way we say this is x bar, like so, just in case you haven't come across this notation before. And in that case, then the formula is sigma x divided by n, where n here is the total sample size. And we can also do this for data in a frequency table. So for data from a frequency table, the way we do this then is again, just x bar. That's gonna be equal to sigma fx all over sigma f there, okay? So what you need to also understand is what the best case is for each of these measures. So for example, if I'm looking at house prices, then out of these three, I'd probably want to use the medium for that. And the reason for that is because average house prices can be affected by outliers. So if there's a mansion in an area that costs say 20 million, then that's likely to skew the average. Okay, we were using the mean. So in that case, for our average house price, we'd use the medium. Okay, now generally speaking, the mean is a better measure of the average because it takes into account all data points. But like we said, in that case, then it can take into account outliers, which can massively affect the average. Okay, so in that case, like I said, you'd use the median there for average house price. But that is something that you need to become um, familiar with and understand which of these three is best to use. Now, what I'm also going to just show here dead quick is the lower quartile and the upper quartile. And again, this isn't anything that should really be new to you. If we just start at the bottom here, just go up to my highest value. So what I'd have here is the highest value, the highest data point. Let's just draw that down here. I've got the highest value. And at this point here, I've got my lowest value. Okay, so the lowest value. Now in the middle here, directly in the middle, we'd have the median, which we call Q2. So that's the median, but you might also know it as Q2, okay? Now the 25% of the data here, this is what we call Q1, and that's the lower quartile. So LQ for lower quartile, we call that Q1. And then the 75% here, that would be Q3 or the upper quartile, okay? So Q3 there, okay? So for Q1, that's going to be n over 4. For Q2, that's going to be n over 2. And for Q3, that's going to be 3n over 4 there. Okay. But like I said, most of this should be something, or should really be something that you're already familiar with from GCSE maths there. Okay. And for that reason, we're not going to take a look at kind of any exam style questions for this. We're going to do a bit more material on this chapter before we take a look at any kind of exam style questions. So there we have it. So that brings the end of this video on measures of location and central tendency. In the next video, we're going to take a look at linear interpolation.